Hello everyone and welcome to Caroline's Craft Tree and today I'm going to do a little tutorial on some flowers. Now I got this idea from Kim Newberg. I'll leave her uh, YouTube video below about these. She called them her finger flowers and I'm calling mine a thimble flower and you'll find out shortly why. So I've got a bunch of goodies. I've got beads. I've got these applique type flowers, embroidery floss, um, some little tiny appliques, some of these little rosette ribbon trims. Got some distress ink. I've got a bunch of um, seam binding. And I'm going to make a whole bunch of these. So I'm going to show you right from the start on what I did. Move some of these out of the way. Now here's a few flowers that I've finished. And I think they turned out so cute. And I'll show you what I did. So I've got a piece of seam binding. It's about three inches long. Just need my glue. I'm just using art glitter glue. I'm going to put a little bit of glue just on the end. Don't need much. I find the art glitter glue works fine. You can use Fabri-Tac or whatever else you want. But I'm just going to glue those two ends together. Just like that. Just like I've done with all of these. So, when Kim sewed hers, she would put in her two fingers, which is why she called them the finger flowers, and she would do her gathering while this sat on her fingers. But my stubby little fingers don't seem to work like that. So, I just put a thimble on my finger, hence why I'm calling mine flowers. So you can see when I hold it over there you can see where the glue is. So I'm just gonna go in right on the edge of the glue. I've got a knot in the end of my thread. One swoop around to secure that. And now I'm just going to go in and out at the end of the seam binding. Your stitches don't have to be fancy or anything. Hopefully you can see my stitches. I'm maybe I don't know, a sixteenth of an inch away from the edge of the of the seam binding. So I'm just going to go all the way around. Now I tried this without a thimble. And I kept poking my finger. So I thought, well, a thimble would work perfect for this. But check out Kim's video on how she did hers. I'm putting my own little twist on them. Once you get going on these, they go fairly quickly. Um, I've just been playing with them a little bit in the evenings, so I don't have a lot made yet. But I'm going to make a few dozen to have on hand. Um, they're thin enough that you can put them in a journal without causing too much bulk. I try to keep my journals as flat as I can. Therefore, I try to keep all my embellishments and stuff as flat as I can. So the side of the ribbon that we're looking at is the wrong side. And don't you just love it when you're just about done and you get a knot in your thread. Let's 
hope it comes out. Okay, there we go. Good. I'm using embroidery floss because I have tons of it and it is fairly strong. So you want to start and stop on the same side, which is the wrong side. So you can kind of see my knot there, I hope. So now I'm gently going to pull and gather all that up. I would keep the um, seam binding um, fairly thin, so um, like ribbon would work, but ribbon's going to be quite a bit thicker. Okay, so now I've kind of got it tight, and I'm holding where my stitch is with my thumbnail. Just going to go back and forth a couple of times. Just where all the gathers are. I want to kind of secure my thread a little bit. And then I'm also going to do just a couple of slip knots. Now everybody ties their knots different. This is just how I find it easiest. I'm not going to see this side anyway, so I don't really care what it looks like. Okay, so there we go. Now you can like work that flat. I find that some, um, like this one here, see how it kind of almost made like a cup effect, which is okay. If you don't like that, you could glue it down or stitch the very end of the sorry silk down. Whereas you can see this one is really, really flat. And I'm not sure if it's the different types of seam bindings or what. This red one and this pink one are the same. They've laid quite flat compared to some of the other ones. These cup, these two here I actually glued down a little bit. Just I wanted to see what they looked like. So, okay. So now I've got a whole bunch of these. So I decided I was going to make layered flowers by stitching this on. So I'm just going to go back and forth a couple of times through this little middle part of the flower. Now I tend to come up through the middle where I gathered and then go down when I've I go down through the, the seam binding where it's gathered to give it, make sure it's got a little bit of strength. I'll do about three stitches or so. Don't need a whole ton. Okay, so there's that. Now this one is going to be a little bit cup shaped. And as I say, I don't know why it does that, but that's okay. It gives the flower a little bit more dimension and I can always glue or sew it down like I did on this. So now I can do all kinds of things in the middle. I could put one of these little appliques. I could put one of these ribbon rosette things in the middle. Or I can do the beads, like these are. So I've got some beads. I made sure that they went over my needle because I'm not using a beading needle. So I'm going to come up in the middle. I'm going to put a bead on. Now these beads were from a really old pearl necklace. So they're kind of off-colored, which is perfectly fine. And there's one bead. I'm going to come up in the middle again. Pick up another bead. 
You could use any size of beads you wanted for this. This is they, These ones are big enough that you can really see them, but small enough that they don't give a lot of bulk. Okay, and now one more. Things do seem to look better when you have odd numbers of things such as beads and whatnot. Okay, I'm going to do one more bead down in the middle. That one got a bit twisted with a knot in it. There we go. Okay, three beads in there. And now I'm just going to tie some knots in the back. And I just do like a half hitch. I do four or five of them. Because I always find the first one or two. Oops. Um, sometimes they'll come undone. You could put a little drop of glue on the knot on the back, but these will eventually get glued down to something. One more little half hitch. And let's trim that off. And there is our little thimble flower. Now the beads sometimes go a little wonky, like on this one here, but that's okay. Flowers aren't perfect. So I wanted to show you about this one here. Because I thought, mm, I'm not big on white. So because the backgrounds are white on all these, I thought, no. Yeah. So I decided, let's color them. Let's just get a little scrap piece of paper here. So I just took some Distress Ink. You could use any kind of ink. This one's Victorian Velvet because it is kind of a peachy color. I'm just using one of these finger daubers. Loaded up with some ink. You could color these anyway or you could color them before. But I didn't know what color I wanted to do. But I just pulled the little flower back and then I just ink the ends and just go around it's mostly just the ends I want to get because I'm not really going to see the other stuff So now we have a beautiful pink, kind of more a dusty rose, dark dusty rose color. And then that one there is orange. The difference in the colors are really, really nice because it gives it some contrast, but yet they go together. But I think these flowers are so, so cute. Whether they're with beads or the appliques. Or even the little um, ribbon rows. They all turned out great. I love them. And they're thin enough. The thickest part is the beads. So they're thin enough to go into a journal or on the outside so there we have it little film bowl flowers and as I say I will link Kim's channel below you can check out how she's done them and make some yourself they're a great little mass make project. I'm going to got a whole bunch more here to do up. 
I've got a couple different kinds of seam binding. Stuff here kind of has little, almost little stitches running through it. But I just took a bunch of the different colors of seam bindings I've got. So that way I can do a, a nice little combination of flowers in different colors to match my different projects. These would be great if you've used seam binding for your closing of your journal. Because then you can use the same seam binding in your flowers to match it all up. Hope you enjoyed this little tutorial and we will see you again soon. Bye.